where to eat and what to do in Sleepy Hollow, New York. If you're visiting Sleepy Hollow, you might notice that it borders a nearby village called Tarrytown. The two are so close together that you can walk or take a quick drive to get between destinations in both towns. And that brings us to our first stop, coffee. soy milk but they also had almond oat and I believe coconut as well and then regular milk and this is delicious it's not quite fall yet but it's close enough so I was feeling the hot beverage vibes so let's try the scone the icing is good I'm not getting as much gingerbread but both of them really give me you know super fall vibes so if you're looking for a quaint coffee shop on the day in Sleepy Hollow in Terrytown. This is perfect, which also this location is in Terrytown. You have a beautiful strip you can walk along. So if you're visiting Sleepy Hollow in Terrytown, this is great to come, stop, get some coffee. Or if you're just coming for a day, you also can come here and work. A lot of people are here on computers or you know, just spending some time here. Catching some friends. This is definitely a great spot. Now, Sleepy Hollow got its claim to fame from Washington Irving, who wrote Rip Van Winkle, and you guessed it, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Which, fun fact, Sleepy Hollow was actually called Sleepy Hollow after Washington Irving's short story. But Westchester didn't stop there. The nearby town Irvington is also named for Washington Irving. It's a music hall. There's a bunch of live music. There are different comedians. Pete Davidson is coming. Pretty cool if you're looking for a show. This is the iconic Headless Horseman Bridge, or at least one like it because the real one doesn't really exist. But if you stand here and imagine Ichabod Crane riding in the dead of night, being chased by the headless horseman, maybe you feel like you're in the story. And if you don't have a great imagination, then you could just go to the statue nearby that depicts this part of Washington Irving's story. This is the old Dutch Reformed Church, and it was built in 1685, and 135 years later in 1820, Washington Irving wrote The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which featured a reference to this church. However, people often think that he is referencing the nearby Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, but it's really this old Dutch church. But the cemetery is a great attraction here, and it's where Washington Irving is buried. Last fall, I took a lantern tour of the cemetery, and it was such a great way to visit the grounds. So if you're interested in that, I'll have it linked above and down below.
for lunch, we came to Horse Feathers. I got a tuna melt with some garlic mashed potatoes and gravy on the side. And then cameraman Brian had a grilled cheese with sweet potato fries. Both were delicious. And upon further inquiry, apparently the name of this place is actually named for a Marx Brothers film called Horse Feathers. I have yet to really see any references to it, but the whole place really captures the vibe of Terrytown and Sleepy Hollow. It's very rustic and there's a lot of references and history uh, on the walls and, you know, literal quotes from a lot of the famous authors from this area. So if you're looking to kind of capture that feeling of Terrytown and Sleepy Hollow on your visit here, it's definitely a great spot. It's also a pub, so you can just come for a drink if that's what you're looking for. Our next stop is the Sleepy Hollow Lighthouse. It was installed in 1883 and operated for 78 years by 12 different keepers. Today, you can tour the lighthouse or just stop by on foot to take in the views. There is construction around the lighthouse right now, so just check online for any updates on how to visit. Now, Sleepy Hollow and Terrytown have a lot of estates that you can tour. The Rockefellers, Washington Irving's house, the Lindhurst Mansion, and the Octagon House, just to name a few. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to come back and check out any of those. But this was our last stop. I hope you enjoyed exploring Terrytown and Sleepy Hollow. Also, I highly recommend visiting in the fall because that is when Sleepy Hollow really comes alive. But actually, they really have a lot of awesome events and the town is all decked out for the fall season. So thanks so much for watching. And if you're looking for more outside of New York City content, then check out my Hike and Eats video where I hike Hook Mountain and head into the town of Nyack for a bite to eat. But that's it. See you again soon.